Hi, my name's Ashley and I'm a um, first time mum to a little baby boy called Caster who is four and a half months old. Um, I'm wanting to hopefully make some videos, make this channel um, to help other first time or mums in general that are maybe dealing with some of the issues and things that we've had to deal with and hopefully be able to give people some tips or just kind of make people feel a bit better that there's somebody else also going through the same thing. I just gone and got him from his nap. So here's Gaston now. Good morning, Papa. Who's that? Who's that, my baby? Is that my baby? Smile for the camera. It's just the most gorgeous baby in the whole world. I love you so much. Yes, I do. Um, so I wanted to talk about a few different things in my videos. I'll probably make some more going forward as well. But up until this point, I've um, I was obviously dealt with being pregnant during lockdown. So I found out I was pregnant actually on the first day of lockdown, the very first lockdown. And the government announced the lockdown and I raced home that night after work and said to my partner I think he's checking us pregnant because we have been trying um, and I thought well I better just check because pregnant women and vulnerable people shouldn't be at work and things if, if they are so I went to the bathroom and checked and it turned out that I was which was very um, random I hadn't even missed a period or anything yet I was just I was probably just about three weeks pregnant uh, the earliest I possibly find out, so it was a really long pregnancy as well. Um, but it meant then the next day I went into work. They, at the end of that day, they kind of said, right, things are things are happening. We we can stay at home now, and I haven't been back in work since. Because even when the lockdown was lessened last year, I just I just worked from home, um, and then, and even then it wasn't that much work. Um, it was my job's not really one you can do from home with a teaching assistant so I was doing bits of admin and stuff I could do but there wasn't much I could really do um, so from then um, I've been off and then I was due back in in September and um, I decided to take early maternity I will talk about all of that more I'll do a video all about my pregnancy which might be quite long but um there was a lot that went on during my pregnancy obviously with lockdown and stuff there was a lot of boring time as well but i just had my hair done as well so i was waiting to do these videos until i'd actually had my hair done because lockdown's just been eased and the hairdressers have just been open again so i feel like a new woman this is actually in the background and he's got hiccups so if you hear that in the background that's what it is um i'm actually going to do a video about um my birth at some point as well because i actually ended up laboring for over 24 hours ended up having to have a c-section so then i will also probably do a video about my recovery with that um luckily my husband was my holiday saved up and his paternity and it was around christmas time so we had a lot of time he had a lot of time off to be able to help me which was so needed because I had had a C-section and then to add to that, um, Castor was very colicky, now, whether you believe in colic or not, it's defined by a, um, a baby crying three hours a day, at least three times a week and he would he'd way surpass that. So colic or not, there was still a lot of crying, there was a lot of issue and we were trying to work out what was wrong with him, bless him. So it was very hard for them first maybe six to eight weeks so it was amazing having my husband um off helping um and also since then we've discovered that Cassie has um bad reflux that was after about a couple of weeks old they started to develop that so that probably is what was causing the colicky cryingness to some extent um 
I, it's, it's hard to know, isn't it, with the baby because they're crying and you don't, we can't tell you why. But um, I'm pretty sure that the reflux is the reasons why he's got quite severe reflux. So we've obviously got to know him better. Um, he's developed more, and we've kind of started to get a better picture of what's um, what he's struggling with. Um, and obviously the colickiness has stopped now because he's four and a half months old, and it's it, that's improved from about three months. But it was a very hard period, so I will talk about that. Um, he's also, his routine um, has improved. Again, I'll make a proper video about it, but um, he, at the beginning, because of all the crying and the reflux and things, he was, um, with his routine, he just, obviously newborns don't really have a routine anyway, but he, would, he could sleep for 10 minutes one day and then sleep for six hours the next day. That was rarer, <laughs> but um, he might do that once, once or twice here and there, and then the rest of the time wouldn't really sleep. So it was um, that was quite difficult to um, deal with. So once he kind of was coming out of the colickiness and we're getting to a bit of a better age, um, I started trying to get a little bit of a routine with him, and um, I've used some more gentle approaches. I've not used any dramatic sleep training things um just kind of reading his cues and stuff really but i will do a video more about that um i'll do maybe do a bit of a video about play and some of the things that we do i really don't concern myself very much with milestones and development because you can stress yourself out thinking oh he's not done this yet why has he not done that and all babies develop as far as i know at different rates um and if you're so concerned with milestones and different things you're not actually going to enjoy and make the most of this, the thing that's going on because you're just getting stressed about what's happening and what's not happening. Um, we're just probably coming out of the end, fingers crossed, of the sleep regression kind of phase at the moment. Um, he's, as I'm talking now, last night he only did two wake-ups, which is just like unheard of for the last month and a half. So I will probably do um, a video about a bit about that as well. And uh, kind of struggle with that again no consistency really everything's just been all over the place but that all over the placeness sets you off kilter sets him off kilter so um we've been trying to get a bit more of a routine um and i feel like we're finally coming out of the other end of that um and one of the last things i want to just mention and i probably i do definitely want to make a, a video on this and kind of maybe try to follow our journey with it a little bit, um, is I was discovering the Montessori method. I don't know if many of you have heard of it, but um, my understanding is it's that lady who, um, an Italian doctor, who discovered that, um, you know, if you follow a child's lead um, and allow them as much independence and space to develop and progress as possible then that's the best for the best thing for the child so rather than them then restricting them by strapping them in things all the time or um kind of always watching them and always allowing them some independent space creating the spaces to, for the child to be able to be as independent as possible so especially babies and toddlers making sure there's a space in the house that's like a safe space for them to be able to go into and um, be free and independent and do what they will. So we're actually at the moment um, going, changing our nursery. We're going to be doing it in the next couple of weeks, um, Caster's bedroom, to um, more fit the kind of Montessori mindset because we've just gone with the traditional hot wardrobe, changing bed, all of that. And obviously that isn't a safe environment for a baby to just be roaming around in. So we are going to be changing that, potentially putting a floor bed down um, and got some furniture that's more his kind of uh, size. He's only four and a half months old, so the room's going to be pretty minimal at first, but it's his room and I've kind of got has changed my mindset. Like it's not about what, what it looks like and how pretty it is, it's his room and he needs to be able to navigate that room as safely as possible. So that's where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. So I'm hoping to make a bit of a video to show you what we do and the changes that we make. Um, the reason I discovered Montessori is through some videos I've watched on YouTube and some people I follow. 
so I'm hoping uh, I'll I'll sorry I'll link them down below um, and it, they've been so helpful to me teaching me all sorts about the Montessori lifestyle and again I don't really follow anything I, with anything I don't really follow it perfectly to the T and read the book and go right I'm going to do exactly this exactly that um because a lot a lot of it a lot of it can be a little bit stricter like oh they shouldn't really be using like plastic um toys and things like that well he's got some plastic toys and that they shouldn't have anything that that, that holds them at all well he has got a pie chair that converts into a toddler chair and i'll probably show you that at some point but um there's some bits that i'm taking and some bits that i'm not but um i am hoping to follow most of this kind of montessori ideal because i do it really fits with my idea of of being a mum and having a baby and having a small child and and i've always thought oh i want to have quite an independent child that can that is their own person and doesn't need to be coddled or need to be that they, they can they they learn to do things for themselves and so that's kind of where we're going to be heading hopefully if things um work out so i will probably show you some videos about that as you can probably hear he's getting a little bit crabby are you coming baby so i'm going to go and pick him up off his blanket and um yeah i'll make some um, videos in the future about some of them topics and hope to see some of you watching them. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.